All right, all right. What's up, everyone? Art Morrison III here with another episode of the Hoop Chatter Podcast. As always, I got my boy Kevin Tarka with me and a very special guest. If you guys can see, if you're watching on YouTube, our first guest on video, Sean Light. Insert hand claps. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is episode, what is it, 28? Um, so as promised, last episode, we got Sean Light here, strength and conditioning um, coach. And he's going to you know, tell us a lot more about what he does in a little bit, but he's actually one of, you guessed it, Tarka's ex-teammates, <laughs> right? It seems like Quinnipiac, like, produces crazy talent outside of basketball. Like, I don't know what the, the culture is like there. That's you right. guys should start an enterprise. <laughs> we had, like, five Qu- Quinnipiac <laughs> alumni on here. But, Tarka, man, tell us a little bit about Sean real fast. Yeah, man, and, and you guessed it to our listeners. Another Quinnipiac, uh, Quinnipiac alum and, and teammate. So, this guy's... Uh, so yeah, we started as teammates and, and pretty quickly became, you know, one of my best friends. And he's got quite the story from West Virginia basketball to Quinnipiac and a print journalism major who turned into a strength and conditioning coach. And he was in the Diamondbacks organization all the way to the Lakers organization. And now he's, I, I call him a health and science guru. Um, he's a human performance specialist. He teaches online courses. He's um, teaches people how to be successful and have a sex- successful fitness career and also business education. So this guy does it all. But without further ado, Sean Light, welcome to Hoop Chatter. Well, thank you, gentlemen. What a lovely, what a lovely introduction. Quinnipiac, man. Hey, we're, we're doing it big up there, right? Yo, you guys really are, bro. I'm like, <laughs> I can't compete, man. If I bring my alumni in here, it would be like teachers and like you know they, they I mean? should start paying us for the impressions that we're giving man i'm tagging them and everything this has got to be recruiting right like we're doing it right now we're like my kid's gonna go to quinnipiac you know? <laughs> <laughs> cool That's stuff funny. yo so sean man tell us dive right into you know so we don't waste any time man we did an okay job of introducing you but yeah i always feel like no one can introduce you better than you can <laughs> yourself right so yeah. 30 seconds on the clock bro give us a rundown of everything it is that you do yeah i mean uh, you guys said it I, I mean what a wild ride it's been i was a journalism major at at quinnipiac i was originally a finance major when i was at wvu and uh you know it, my, my basketball career had, was, was such a wild ride, and, and my, my dream, my dad is from West Virginia. I grew up a Mountaineer fan, uh, so my dream was always to play at West Virginia. Uh, John Beeline was the coach when I got there, and then they and then, at, uh, then he left for Michigan after my freshman year, and Bob Huggins came in, and uh, it just wasn't going to happen there. So I ended, up, <laughs> I ended up transferring to Quinnipiac. It was amazing. I mean, like, like, like Kev said, like all my best friends in the world are from Quinnipiac, and uh, you know, like I still talk to the coaches and, and everybody and I just really stumbled into strength and conditioning and ended up really liking it and really taking to the science aspect of it and, and learning how like what create what creates like optimal performance and you know that I think that passion that drive my work ethic ended up taking me up to the NBA with the LA Lakers and getting to be the strength and conditioning coach for them which is just at 32 years old a ridiculous part of my <laughs> my uh, resume here and uh, it was an awesome experience and now what I do is I run a company here in New, in New York City called 4A Health and yeah I, I teach trainers I teach strength and conditioning coaches uh, how to be successful uh, in in the weight room with exercise science but also teach them how to uh, grow their career because a lot of what you know what creates your success in your career uh is predicated on things that have nothing to do with strength and conditioning so uh we, we try to create re- well-rounded professionals and uh every day we're just going a little step further that's, that's way awesome, over bro. 30 seconds shot clock violation <laughs> on me 30 <laughs> seconds is a it's a you know what i mean it's a, it's a fake to make you like wrap it up because we'll have yeah. people on here talking for 20 minutes about themselves right let us we gas can, you we up. can do that <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so I, I want to take it back a little bit, right? We're, we're entrepreneurs on here and talking about, we, we share that. We we get on the phone and we can just go um, yeah. talking about just passion and purpose and all that good stuff. So with that being said, man, um, I want to talk about two things combined in one, right? Uh, you swapping your major out twice, right? You went from finance to journalism and then you ended up being in strength and conditioning, yep. right? And then also um, the organizations you were with and now you're doing your own thing. I want to know if there's anything behind that, like if your passion or your you felt like you always were meant to do your own thing or yeah. you know, how did you transition between those, those gigs? Yeah. I definitely so, transitioned. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the transition was you, you Kev, you saw me at Quinnipiac. I, you know, this, uh, this is a far cry from, from my QU days. And uh, I honestly, up until, up until 
probably a year deep into knowing Kevin. Uh, so that was probably 2009. I was 100% positive I was going to go to the NBA. Uh, I was working for it. I was committed to it. Full faith it was going to happen. Uh, I chose finance at WVU for the literal reason that I like money. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> well, geez, like, man, there you go. I, I, I like, like money. Like finance. we all did. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then when I went to uh, Quinnipiac, I picked journalism uh, because I thought it was going to be easy. Uh, and I nailed it. It was super easy. <laughs> uh, I'm a communications major myself. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I got exactly. you. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think I took a test at all while I was at Quinnipiac. <laughs> Maybe now the recruiting is going down. But, uh, I, yeah, I don't think – we wrote a lot of papers. And I'm a decent writer. Writer, so it was it was pretty easy for me to to do and uh literally at, at the end of my career i was like well i don't want to do any of this i have no idea what i'm going to do and uh I, I literally one of my friends who coincidentally brett utley quinnipiac uh quinnipiac alum who is the assistant coach for miami fc <laughs> under get david beckham list. dude yeah get him on the list uh he was the one who suggested that i go into strength and conditioning and uh we did it and uh just took a just took a stab at it and i loved it and uh what was the second part of the question with the organization? Hold on. Before we get into that, actually, okay. I, I, I always have this funny story in my mind on like that, the key transition of when like Sean Light realizes like journalism is not for him. And it was, <laughs> and it was at, it was at your internship. Oh, at, <laughs> at whatever internship that was and you tell the story best so yeah so please please tell the story so they used to have me going in there for i was at the new haven register in new haven, connecticut uh and they used to have me going in there for ridiculous hours like going in at like 4 p.m and going for like eight hours uh and like this is you're gonna you as we go into the entrepreneurship side of it you'll realize that i'm a little bit of a uh I walk, I, you know, I walk my own line here yes. and, uh, and these guys uh, down there, they wanted me to do this. And I was realizing that like, nobody's, nobody's paying any attention to me while I'm down here. Like I'm, I'm, I can go for a walk for an hour and nobody's, pay, nobody knows I'm here. So I used to, I used to show up at like, I used to show up at like, I had to be there till like 10. I would show up at like nine 15 uh, and be like, yeah, crazy day. Right. Yeah. I've been here the whole eight hours. Sign my paper. Great. Thanks. See you later. And he would sign it every single time. And then my last day there, I decided, because I had been telling the guys the whole time on the team that like, this is like ridiculous. I'm not doing anything. Uh, and I ended up taking a video of like, like the original vlog of my last day at this newspaper uh and i was i remember the phone was ringing and i was holding the phone like people like would call in to report the high school box scores and i would like held the phone up to or the camera up to my face and i was like there goes my phone i'm not answering it <laughs> and i would just let it ring and ring and ring and then i would like go to the cafeteria they had this like awning that overlooked the entire floor and i would just like i went up to the top with my with my camera and i screamed as loud as i could i was like ah and everybody turned and looked and i went i ran away <laughs> i was just an absolute uh idiot just college Savage. kid it was it just now like acting out because he realizes he's not going to play in the nba and he doesn't know what, <laughs> he doesn't know how to uh how to uh, behave in a in the real world Yo, that's funny stuff, man. So yo, no, that ties in perfectly, though, into the second part of the question was like, yeah. all right, so um, obviously strength and conditioning, you found your, your new passion, but you were working with uh, other organizations, right? Yeah. Diamondbacks, Lakers. Was there anything or any moments, um, probably not as bad, but similar that made you say, hey, you know, I, I want to do my own thing? Yeah, I mean, so I left the Lakers by force. <laughs> they they required me to. Uh, that's and, actually a great uh, story too. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty candid. So they, uh, my my GM who hired me, Mitch Kupchak, he got fired midway through the season. Uh, they bring in Magic Johnson. Claim to fame is that Magic Johnson fired me. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and so after that, we, after that, you know the the. You know, my thought was like, look, I spent so much time and energy. Like, I believe I'm a really good strength and conditioning coach. I believe that uh, I believe that I put a lot of effort into this. And and I was fired because uh, a new guy got a job, right? Right. And, and I understand, like, I was never, ever bitter about that. I understand the position that I'm in. Like, look, you get a job in professional sports, very good chance you get fired. So no problems there, no bitterness. Uh, but, like, for me, I was like, I put so much effort into this. Why am I going to put myself in another position where I could just get fired at, a, at the drop of a hat. And I remember I had a couple opportunities with some NBA teams uh, who were like fringy teams, right? Like they weren't so good. I was like, well, if their coach gets fired, am I back in the same position yeah. the, the following year? So, uh, and, and again, like I've always been, I've always been like a, a 
march to the beat of my own drum guy like i don't really listen to anybody <laughs> for anything uh I, I think i honestly now having gone through the process i don't think that I don't think I think this is what I'm actually destined to do uh, is to create my own thing and and do my my like forge my own path and yeah. uh, I don't think there was any one thing in particular I think I just uh, like I was I wanted to go back to the NBA but I wanted to go back to the right situation and every opportunity that kept coming up I was like ah I don't like that I don't like that there's something about that I didn't like and now I'm at the point where I'm like this has been so amazing like I look at the NBA strength and conditioning now as like a small time job like I I think the ceiling is significantly higher uh, doing what I'm doing now. And I'm sure you two can attest, attest to that where it's like, like I look at people at that level and I'm like, yes, they have like a high level job, but they're attached to something more significant. That's why they're, uh, that's why they have a high level job. I want, I want it to be the, ver the vice versa. I want people uh, attaching themselves to 4A Health, which is my company, because it's such a big time organization. So, uh, and making that transition and, and going through the path has just been a wild ride of, of just nonsense and craziness. Yeah, bro, we take, we take sound bites from this and then we'll like yeah. post them on our page. And like, it's usually some sort of sports related because that's our audience, but I might yeah. take that whole clip of you breaking it down and put that <laughs> on my personal page. Yeah. On my page I'm Bring like, it on, man. Membership. Yo, all that is super huge. Everything that you just said about, yeah. you know, being attached to a high level, a high level job or a high yeah. level organization and being the high level organization. That's yeah. good stuff. And that, but I mean, that, that obviously doesn't happen overnight. And that's part of the, you know, the business that we try and the entrepreneurial mindset we try and kind of leave gems on too. It's like, so, so how many years now has it been since you started? I mean, it's been, you know what, from, from day one of you getting f forced from the Lakers organization. <laughs> that was um, 2017. Yeah. So, I mean, right. and that's even, that's even a small window of comparison where it's going to be in, you know, three years, obviously, yeah. but yeah. I mean, three years was like, and obviously, you know, to, to some extent I can speak on this to, to a lot of extent, Art can with his businesses, but that's just not like waking up and like, walking around for three years that's like pedal to the metal like busting your ass yeah lots of ups lots of downs big time learning over three years yeah you know i think it's just you know in the beginning it was like i actually thought when i left the lakers that it was gonna be a lot easier for me to drum up business just because of my re my, my resume with the lakers and i was shocked to find out that almost nobody cares i think in this social media generation that we're in now i think the access to higher level professionals is a lot it's a lot greater. Like my brother, he played in Major League Baseball, uh, and he's always like commenting on people's pictures and like talking to random people around the world. And like, it's not that odd for somebody with a blue check mark to hit to send you, to like one of your posts or to or to comment Correct. on one of your posts, right? So you know, the fact that I worked with the Lakers, people were like, "Yo, sick, whatever." But you're a little expensive, so I'm all set. Right, right. <laughs> um, so you know, like honestly, I, I my, my where I'm at right now, I find that entrepreneurship uh, is like the greatest journey of self-exploration self-discovery that you could possibly uh go on because you realize what the world is all about i mean look if you're if you make it to a certain level you start realizing what actually wins and what this world's all about and then you can start looking at other people and saying like yeah maybe they have the chops maybe they have the chops maybe you should maybe you should not leave the nine to five you know uh and it's it's tough man it, it's but uh it's a it's it's awesome if you can do it it really is Wow, dope stuff. You mentioned your brother, man. Uh, I know Target had that in the notes here. Tell me a little bit about that, man. I, I, did that fuel your passion to... First of all, is your brother older or younger? He's younger. Younger, okay. So how much younger? Uh, he is three years younger than I am. Okay, so your household was competitive as hell. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Yeah, so did that fuel you a little bit when, like with your head down tunnel vision of getting to the NBA? Knowing that your younger brother was also uh, you know, a prospect, not really. Like it was cool. It was cool to see him do his stuff. You know, I I always had. I would say that I was always kind of long term. Like I remember in my. I remember like when he was playing in the big leagues. Uh, like anywhere we went, Kev, you know the deal, man. You you were out with us and going all all sorts of different places. Like like we our existence in that room couldn't have been less you know like people didn't care Zero. at all like people only talked to him uh and people were like and, and i get it like i mean that's an elite level dude and, and he's highly talented and he's on tv he's got a blue check mark what a cool guy uh and uh you know i think like my head was always like look like i, I think most i remember thinking to myself like i think most people would be bothered by this but for my and myself i'm like looking long term like look i understand the way this works i ha i i am i can't throw a baseball 102 miles an hour so i just got to build it my way so i was 
never bothered by that. I don't think I was ever fueled or motivated in the slightest uh, yeah. by 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 his by his stuff. I was proud of him. I loved watching him play and uh, and stuff like that. But uh, you know, I was like the more the more you get to know me, Art Man, like the like the more you can be like, yo, this dude is weird, man. So, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like uh, just I, and that really had no effect on me. But mm. but it was. I mean, I think that I think that that, that attributes a lot to self awareness. Uh, yeah. uh, just just your your personality too, and just how you how how well you, I guess yeah, how well you know yourself and how self aware you were. Like I, I can't say the same for me growing up in certain aspects of like comparing to others or being like, yeah. okay, Kevin, you know, like you got absolute zero chance at getting a <laughs> Division One scholarship. I was like, no, like I can get it, I can get it, I can yeah. get it. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know, I think like, that feeds in, and I think that's awesome. With it ties into the the theme of what you guys are doing with uh, with this podcast and your respective businesses it's like like this having self-awareness and that understanding like I always said that I and when I when I give presentations to strength and conditioning coaches I say that my biggest uh, my biggest asset is my ability to be objective about anything that I'm looking at like I would for example I would go into an NBA weight room and realize that most guys like do like medium intensity workouts. Uh, and then I go out and I look at the people who are training the youth athletes and training uh, high school and college, and they're all like max intensity guys, right? And like those, when I look at the, those, those people who are doing that, I'm like, well, uh, I see where you're coming from, but have you seen what it looks like in the NBA? Because all the guys who are where you are training the people to be are doing nothing of the sort. And, I, and, and the, uh, th there's too many people buying into the... Uh, the stigmas, the, uh, you know, like the, you got to grind, you got to work hard, also stuff like hard, that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like the more, 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 but the guys who are there, uh, aren't doing that. And, and there's a huge disconnect between what's actually happening and what people think is happening. Uh, and having that awareness, that objectivity, uh, self-awareness, uh, is a huge missing link and probably something that you guys are working with this, especially to fill in that gap. I want to dive into that more, bro, because I, yeah. I don't know if I told you, I played a little bit of professional basketball, so, like, I, I tapped into that a little bit. So I, I can recall being at the Chicago Bulls facility, right, with D-Rose and all those guys and seeing yeah. how they trained on the court yeah. in, in the weight room and having that same exact thought. But, I'm yeah. like, I'm not a scientist like you, so I just yeah. was like, they're, they're not even really doing that much, you know? Like, yeah. but, So, obviously, to really shift, because we've been entrepreneurial all, all day so far, yeah. right? really shift to the basketball specifics tell us a little bit more man about how you, like how should in your opinion and in your knowledge kids be training like right now and when i say kids let me say i, I want let's leave out juniors and seniors in high school i'm talking about like okay you know kids in eighth right. grade early high school freshman yep. sophomore yep so so the very very cut and dry uh the way that the body works okay the the way that the brain specifically yeah, works this. okay hype. <laughs> yeah so this and this is this is real it's very black and white it is it is cut and dry when so any input that comes into our body into our brain right and that all comes through our senses so i see something i hear something i taste something i smell something any input goes up into the brain and it's going to go in one of two directions it's either going to be like this is safe or this is dangerous okay there's no like kind of safe kind of dangerous it is it is either uh left or it's right okay so if i am for example if somebody walks into my room right now with a machine gun okay going dangerous pretty clear right if somebody walks into my or if some my my uh my speakers come on here and and starts blasting uh takashi 69 right that guy's an absolutely horrendous musical artist, in my opinion. <laughs> and and if it's music, it's not a machine gun. I'm not going to die, but there's only one way for it can go. And it's not going to go to save. It's going to go to dangerous, right? So now that's going for every input that's coming in. If I smell something I don't like, danger, okay? If I see a person that I don't like, danger. So would you need to – so once and any time a dangerous input comes into the, into the, uh, into the body – the body gets really stiff okay your ribs flare up your hips go forward you can't you can no longer twist you can no longer go side to side and as a basketball player you just committed suicide right now you can't do anything you can't twist you can't go right or left you can only go straight ahead there's no spin moves there's no behind the back there's none of that you you've lost all of that completely and now what people are what people the disconnect that people are are, are not uh understanding is that if i get in a kid's face right danger stiffness done 
right? And then over time, as, as things progress, uh, that's going to become an embedded part of their system. So if they're always exposed to like this serious nature of b basketball, uh, they're exposed to these like threatening inputs, these disciplinarian coaches, they're always going to develop that stiffness aside from the one in one million kid who comes around and says like, screw you to the coach. Uh, and they don't, that's not really, it doesn't really affect them. Right. But for everybody else, they're going to develop that stiffness, right? Uh, Kev, I use this example all the time. When I give my strength and conditioning presentations, I say, if I was going to go out to a basketball court right now and shoot 10 free throws all by myself, I'm going to drill seven to 10, right? But my college free throw percentage was 46%, right? And you say, like, what is that? Well, there was so much perceived danger in my environment, whether it be the fans, whether it be the teammate that Kevin knows I'm talking about who was always barking in my ear, right? <laughs> uh, whether, it was the, whether it was the coaches, whether it was, like, who, whatever it was, maybe it was the girls in the stands that were watching, right? Like, whatever it was, there was so much perceived threat and now I've lost my ability to be a basketball player. So what you're really trying to do from a youth standpoint is eliminate all of that threat. I really, I think you would do kids far more, far more good by in like just doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down on the amount of fun that goes into a training uh, environment. Now, look, you want to do, then you go into the entrepreneur side of it, right? Like then you look, the kids look like they're just screwing around. The, maybe the parents don't want to pay you anymore for the business. I get it, but the facts don't change. That's what the neurological system is, is doing with every input that's coming into the brain. If there's somebody wow. listening right now who's saying, oh yeah, that's BS. Like that, that's, that's definitely not how it works. Like this guy's an idiot, whatever. He's got a moose head on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, like th then they're that's going to go to dangerous, and they're going to be like, okay, this guy's an idiot. I'm not going to buy into this, and they're getting that exact reaction to anything that I'm saying right now. And it's uh, it's the biggest misconception. The big, the, and I fell I fell victim to it, uh, working my ass off every single day. Uh, and my brother, he did nothing. He's an idiot. He loves playing Fortnite. He loves playing video games. Uh, he never worked out ever. He took wow. all his trophies, his all American awards and threw them under his bed, never wanted to look at them. And it's just a guy who just doesn't ever see like those things are not magnified to him. Those being on a mound uh, at Fenway Park in front of 50,000 people is does not have the same perception of danger in his brain as it would to you and I. Uh, and that's the biggest that's the biggest uh, difference between when you're at the Chicago Bulls facility and seeing Derrick Rose not doing anything. It's because you're in there. You're like, yo, I could make the Bulls right now. <laughs> right? And Derrick Rose is like, I do not care about this lift at all. I'm making $30 million. Everybody else here just get away from me. I don't care. And that, that person, and of course he's uber talented, right? There's, there's that on top of, I think NBA players are unicorns. They're, yes. they, they don't exist in the real world, but that is the difference. That's why you're busting your ass. And, and he's not, well, I, play, I worked in the NBA, I worked in professional baseball, every single player that wanted to be in the weight room and worked hard and did everything I said was sent home. Everybody who didn't really want to do anything, we're making stacks. Uh, and it's <laughs> like, time. look, like, let's be objective. Let's have that self-awareness, right? What really wins here? Big time, man. I, and and I know I've taken notes on, on all of his presentations already, so I don't need to anymore. But whoever's listening, um, definitely take notes. Not one time was there mentioned, um, you know, like weightlifting or, you know, at 6 a.m. to or 5 a.m. to you know 3 p.m. ball handling workouts and grind 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 not once yeah which is no which is crazy yeah that's good because I uh, am trying to get back in shape and this allows me to sleep in and not feel guilty so I you appreciate should. the you insight should. it's, it's not about volume man like if I'm you if I'm if I'm like trying to get back into it like what it really comes down to is like p p picking the specific things that you want to get better at and doing only that right and then you got to get your rest and weightlifting in weightlifting what you do is you you go to the gym and you basically have a conversation with your brain you say what do you want like okay i want to get bigger i want to get bigger stronger legs so then you 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 savage your legs right <laughs> you tell your brain you're like yo this is mad hard i got to i got to do something about this right so then the, when the workout's over your brain's sitting on the recliner he's like damn dude you going to do that to me again and he's like yeah i'm going to do it to you three times a week over the course of a four week period in a 12 week cycle and then your brain's like all right cool like let me just send more muscle that way uh, in order to help you out and go through that process Process, right but that the, the the only time that the brain can send that more muscle and that reinforcement uh, is when you're resting and recovering if you just keep working harder and keep doing more because that's what it looks like on a Gatorade commercial you've you've blown all your recovery and you're never you're actually making yourself worse in the long run uh, by not paying attention to uh, the rest and recovery sessions Wow wow now that's great insight I'm definitely gonna apply that to, to my coaching because 
so like my coaching philosophy is I like I um very micro assessed. So like each kid, like I, I decide whether I'm gonna be intense in their face or whether yeah, I'm gonna be good. like, hey, let's have fun. So like <laughs> that's good, but I'm definitely one thousand percent like the in your face coach. Not like a yeah. Not not in a it's not in a bad way obviously because I have a successful business so I never offend anyone but like yo my talented kids I'm always like you want to make it yeah. there's some kid in New York right now <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean at the park 6 a.m. you know so so this is great insight even to, to make me a better coach and if there's any other coaches listening um I would definitely tap into this mentality because to me anytime anybody like yourself is like against the grain or given another perspective i'm like objective enough and open-minded enough to be like yo i never thought of that let me implement that to make me like a a more well-rounded coach yeah it's just it's just science and 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 like i understand you know we get into this we get into this debate nowadays with uh you know every every kid gets a trophy and is this too soft (laughs) or we be or you know where are we being old school uh and what i tell people is that I mean, depends on how you look at it. If we're talking about like building character for somebody in the business world, right, which most people are going to end up in, uh, then yeah, you're going to want to not give everybody a trophy. Uh, but on the flip side of it, you look at the the, the youth sports over in Norway. Uh, like the if you look at the Olympic medal counts uh, from the last couple Olympics, summer and winter, Norway is like way up there, and they're attributing it to uh, the fact that they're they don't keep score there's no there's no nothing no competitiveness until they get to like age 12 or 13 or something and then the kid can choose whether or not uh he wants to be uh trained at a higher level uh and what that's doing is is that's that neurological stuff that we're talking about like so from zero to 12 uh they're just having fun and they're just exploring it there's no wins there's no losses there's no trophies there's no feeling bad about yourself if you don't like it whatever if you love it we'll keep it going but by the time you hit 13 14 those neurological connections have already been uh fairly secured in your brain uh and now you can go go through the training process become more rigorous more ingrained in whatever it is that you're doing without the neurological stiffness that we're talking about because you've already formed to uh whoever you are and uh i think that lends itself to the every kid gets a trophy phase or stage uh but look i mean Training, get training somebody to go to the NBA and training somebody to be a successful uh, citizen of society outside of professional sports is a completely very different different ball game. Yeah, we just talked about that last episode actually about th- that whole like training someone to be a professional basketball player versus training someone to just be successful, right? Yeah. So, but no, I, the more you speak, I'm even I keep flashing back to all of my own experiences. So like, I like I I average like 18 points a game in Europe, and like competition was like eh, right, but my game was way different. So like, if you watch my college highlight reel, it's like, I was like a, th- like a three, four, right? Yeah. Like a, but if you watch professionally, like I was a one, two, why is that? Like, I didn't change in a year. Like I trained, right. don't get me wrong, but like, it was because I gave 10 less shits. My team was <laughs> trash. Seriously. Like my team was I, gone. I, totally I was playing with it. like farm boys. Yeah. Right. And I, I said to myself in my head, right. Neurologically, I want to be a shooter and handle the ball. That's what I'm here for. I've always wanted to be. My college coaches stuck me down the post. I yeah. killed, but I hated it. This right. is what I want to do. And not, you know, shots were just going in. I had like three games in a row. I shot three for four from three, five for six, and then four for four. Yeah. Yo, you could, if you could tap into my brain and look up any game ever from third grade to senior year in college, you'll never find a game where I had more than two three pointers. You know yeah. what I mean? So like, I totally know what you mean. Yeah. So I, it, I'm just thinking like, yo, this guy, this guy's a genius. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can you tell that to my girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's good stuff, bro. That, that that that's great stuff. Great insight. Now, so what's next for you, right? Like, so you have your company. Um, I mean, fill in any listeners like you know, like what, what you guys are looking to do in the future. Cause I, I didn't realize you were only three years old, the company. Yeah. So, uh, what we're, what we're really looking to do is just continue to build. We have a virtual platform where, uh, we're really now starting to get a lot of people involved, a lot of trainers from literally it's amazing all over the world. I mean, I, I think we've covered all continents besides Antarctica, uh, right now. This is in, trainers in- or, or clients? Trainers, trainers. So wow. I, what I do is we get strength and conditioning coaches and personal trainers uh, who come in who are like looking to just take things to the next level. Uh, so we, we have a bunch of virtual courses. I think we have 20 courses available right now uh, where they can go in and they can uh, – 
Let's just check it out. They can they can learn posture, breathing, vision about the visual system, uh, uh, nutrition. Uh, they can learn how to blog. They can learn about search engine optimization. They can learn uh, how to reverse Alzheimer's. Right? There's a, so many uh, different avenues that you can actually uh, travel down uh, in the club. And then we talk about there's there's a community where we can talk about like actual growth and setting goals and uh, developing confidence. They can present to each present to the group. They can present to the world because I have a thing called 4A TV mm -hmm. now where people can just give presentations to uh, whoever wants to come in and watch. And, you know, I think the, the, the next steps for the company are going to be uh, obviously continue to build that out, make it better, tossing around the idea of creating an app right now. Uh, but I think the, I think the, I think what's probably going to be next on the horizon is a four day, a four day like mega summit on how to master like general success how to create success in your life uh and then how to master the physical body uh it'll be two days of each uh and i think that is just going to be like the culmination of everything that i've ever done uh at this ripe old age of 32 uh to that's like really the just, tony robbins of freaking yeah I, i'm glad you said it i <laughs> mean he's one player. of the guys that that i that i really look to uh as as a model for for what i've done and i i study so much of his stuff. And I tell you what, the more I'm doing this stuff, the more people are sent bringing his name up. And I'm like, I'm doing something right if people keep saying this when I'm when I'm talking. So maybe it's the headset. I don't know. The headset. The headset is. It's professional, man. But I gotta say, this is the headset that I used to play Fortnite with. So <laughs> you, you know, you tell me. I think it's the hand gestures. Honestly, you got the Tony Robbins hand gestures down. It's like hey, you got those big hands. Yeah. How, how tall are you, bro? What was your position in all that in college? Oh, Kev, let's dive into this one, huh? All right, let's see. <laughs> let's Left or right college. bench? So I, I was, I was, I'm six foot four, uh, and I was, I would say naturally, um, um, probably like a two three in college. So my first year at Quinnipiac, when I was WVU, like definitely size wise, I'm a two, uh, but at, at Quinnipiac. The guys, it was there wasn't as a large of a range of height. Uh, and my first year, roughly seventy five percent of the team got injured. Uh, me and Kev were sixth and seventh man off the bench. Uh, and uh, and there was I would I would have to be a four. And now like this jacked dude that you see right here, uh, <laughs> like I was like thirty pounds less, no joke. I was I was six foot four, a hundred and eighty five pound Division One power forward. Uh, wow. And uh, it just yeah, I mean like and this is what ended up happening was because I was a serviceable four, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, throughout the rest of my career after everybody got healthy again, coach just kind of kept me in at the four. So uh, I used to get I used to get pummeled, man, down there. Holy crap. I remember one time we were up at Cornell. Kev, I don't know if you remember this. Uh, Do I? I think we told, we told this. I know I told you the story recently. A Jeff Foot, uh, seven foot dude at Cornell. This was the year that they were like borderline top 25, uh, like hanging in there with Kansas. And he's seven foot dude. I'm 6'4, 180, like a no chance here. So they did this like cross screen on the block. Uh, and, oh, and, and, and like we switched. Uh, and Jeff Foot, he like, you know how like the big is like reaching behind him, like just, just to get a feel for who's back there. <laughs> and he literally is like reaching, he's like feeling me. And then he turns and he looks at me and he goes, <laughs> Oh yo, ball, ball, ball! <laughs> <laughs> and he and they, they they fed it into him, and I did like the classic. I have no chance. Flop for coping for the charge, right. uh, and I'm laying on the ground. It has these just hanging from the rim, dunking on me. Uh, so I was a four man, not a not a great one. I was I was a hustle guy. I could I could run the plays, uh, but other than that, man, I, I I'll, pass, record, I'll pass it to the good players. For the record, that year that we were sixth and seventh respectively, we only went sixty. So. <laughs> Wait, exactly, exactly we knew where the service ended <laughs> yo that's i was gonna ask like, oh Tarka, that's where Tarka got all uh eight of his points yo, seven all seven of them all points. seven <laughs> yeah you want to talk about getting nervous at the free throw line talk shoot it down to kevin Tarka, man come on oh, which side of the screen it says oh for four or yeah yeah, yeah it's, talk about talk, man i wish you i wish you knew what you knew now back then yeah. so you could tell me like danger 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Like, I, I think, like, even, even, like, knowing this stuff, I think, I think what you really need to look at the end of the day, uh, as strength coaches, as trainers, we have very little time that we spend with, with, with the kids. Even, even as a sport coach, uh, you're very, you, you are a product of who you, of your environment from age zero to age 13. Uh, I was on the phone with a high school strength and conditioning coach the other day, and they were asking me about this. And I'm like, look, you spend an hour with the kids three times a week. He's going to go home for eight, 10, 12 hours, or whatever it is with his parents in that environment. And his friends like you you play such a small role uh in in the development of somebody's neurology
technology. You do the best that you can, but even if you go way off the spectrum in the other way, it's probably not going to be, uh, uh, you know, that big of a factor unless you produce some sort of traumatized, traumatizing moment uh, right. in, a, in a kid's life. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, I, I think like, look, you got to ha- you got to have really good talent. I, I t- I've told Kev before that when I was I, I thought I was going to be jealous when I got to the NBA of how I had wanted to be there. And like if they made a mistake, I was going to be like, I could go out there and do that. And like my first day of practice, I watched Julius Randle like rip through somebody at half court. Julius is like 6'8", 250. Uh, and he ran down, like weaved through the defense and freaking just cocked one back and dunked right on seven foot one Timofe Mozgov. And I was like, yo, I am all set over here. <laughs> Nobody, please do never sub me. I used to play one-on-one and like little pickups every once in a while. Uh, and they would just, oh, God, it was it was horrible. Oh, uh, it was just get it out of my hand. And so, I mean, these guys, I say it all the time, they're unicorns. You know, you got to have incredible talent. You got to have incredible gifts. Then from zero to 13, you got to have the environment that sets you up neurologically to not care about being in front of 20,000 people. Uh, Then you got to have the right breaks along the way to make it happen. You do the absolute best that you can, make the best decisions you can in the moment. uh, And let's, let's see how it shakes out. That's hilarious, man. We should have had you on the last episode because you're literally (laughs) preaching everything that we just I know, I know. Yo, so... All right, before we let you go, we, you know, coronavirus, COVID-19, I got to talk about it because you're in business, you're you're an entrepreneur, you're in training. Um, How, how are you interacting with clients or potential clients? And I really want to get your take on um, virtual training, right? That's why I asked you earlier, are you talking to other trainers or actual people who want to get stronger? So obviously this thing hit and you see everyone going live doing webinars <laughs> yeah. yo it's yeah. crazy Every, everyone's on zoom like training right. people i myself like i'm in two hours i'm training 50 kids on zoom basketball nice. right which is nice. which is pretty cool and it shocked me i thought it was the stupidest thing right, right? so i'm like but we have to continue revenue and i yeah. actually love it and seeing kids actually get better from standing in front of the laptop is motivating as well as like kind of terrifying because it's like yeah. oh man like you know, like, where's this thing going? So I right. wanted to get your opinion on that virtual training. Yeah. Um, if it's necessary, should, should people be taking this time to rest or innovate their own ways of training? Or should they right. rely on people like like yourself to, you know, um, be yeah. on that computer screen or phone screen and get them going? Talk about yeah. that a bit. I, I, think that, I think that virtual training is helpful. Um, I think that, uh, you know, in tra- in person training is better uh you know i think uh, i i just gave to like 30 gyms in uh in new york city here uh this week i gave a two and a half hour lecture on how to math like do- like do things in a virtual climate because they're all struggling uh i don't think people understand the the landscape of having an online uh an online session. I think people just sit in front of their computer and talk and they don't understand like the energy gap that's missing, uh, from on the other end of the computer. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues that go in and a lot of obstacles. Let's put it that way. Uh, there's a lot, like I said, I tell them that their crutches are gone, right? They can't rely on the energy of the gym, the the fancy equipment, uh, the extra resources, just the in-person touch. Uh, they got to find a way to fill that gap. Otherwise people aren't going to pay them. Uh, so I think that there's value. I think people can take this time, uh, to, Honestly, like I, depending on how old you are, I really think that that people should have a lot more fun uh, in in what they're doing. And I don't say that as a Tony Robbins. I don't say this as like a life coach. I say this as a guy who studied neurology for the last six years uh, and under and understands uh, what actually creates an NBA player. I grew up with a major league baseball player, so I know uh, I, I saw how that transpired. And uh, you know, I I don't think that there is. I don't think there is, again, like any one formula. I will say that I think that uh, you are unlikely, unlikely to find a good uh, strength and conditioning coach who's genuinely qualified. The barrier to entry uh, in tra- strength and conditioning and uh, and personal training is far too low. Uh, and you could have anybody who gets certified in a weekend. We've seen that in college football, where college football strength coaches fi- end up they realize that he's just has like one certification. So yeah. uh, you know, it, it's it's really all over the place. And then from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Uh, yeah, everybody's flooding to the internet right now, but I think they're all way behind the curve. Uh, if you go back to the history of my company in the last three months, you'll realize that I was I was getting my webinars set up before I even heard of the coronavirus. So once once all this happened, everybody else was way behind me. My first my first webinar that I ran uh, in, in during the pandemic had 
3,000 viewers uh, from all over the world. And it was it was strictly because I didn't have to scramble to do it. I was set up and 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 it was a matter of preparation. It was about being that guy every single day who gets up and it's like, where do I need to be? What yeah. needs to be organized? What needs to be set up? Uh, and once once that hit, it was just like, boom, like, oh, what's up? What's up, everybody? I'm, <laughs> I'm right here. You just click this link and you're in. Uh, and that day remains the most successful financial revenue standpoint uh, day in, in company history wow. uh, by by so far. And everybody else who's scrambling to it, uh, like, look, you got to do what you got to do, but understand that uh, those points are going to happen again. And the people who are pre-prepared, I guess that's why they call it prepared, <laughs> prepared. <laughs> prepared? Uh, well, we're learning a lot here. Uh, the people who are prepared going into it are going to be the ones who like generate like real success out of it. Yeah, I'm happy I asked that question. So do you think it's here to stay? Do you think it's it's going to be like a thing for good? Virtual training? Yep, overall no. in, in any industry. No, uh, I don't. I think that I think that some people will 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 take to it because they can they realize the scalability of it and and maybe the, and that they potentially have more native ability to working on an all online set setting than they do working uh, at a at a gym in New York City or something like that. Um, but I think for the most part, look, like you and I both know, all, all three of us in this in this chat know that it's going to take a lot of groundwork. It's going to take a lot of uh, effort. It's going to take a lot of creativity. It's going to take a lot of uh, delayed gratification to set up a really good, strong, robust uh, online training model. Yeah. Uh, and human nature tells us. 99% of the people are just absolutely out on hard work and, and going that extra mile. And that's absolutely fine. The way I look at it, it makes it a lot easier for us to, uh, to capitalize on that. But uh, so no, I, do, I don't think that I think it'll be too challenging in the long run for people to do that. They'll rely on the crutches. I think most people are just on their knees waiting for the day uh, that the gyms open back up and, and yeah. they can, uh, and they can cut this, this expense of zoom and, Go to webinar monthly fees out of their budget. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think I think in in one sense it 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 allows people to pivot and realize how they can leverage an online or a virtual class or at least the use of it for some part of their business. But I also see that everyone's going to it. They're like, all right, I need to shift my yeah. entire business online. And it's like, right. guys, don't forget that keep the goal. Yeah, the you goal. see the stock of Zoom going up. You see the stock of all these like you know inside things going up, but what about like, you know, like I, I saw the other day or something, I think my dad told me something, you know, the, the installations of pools right now outside, you can't even get them installed. Right. <laughs> and like, and like, you know, the, the sales on outdoor, like volleyball nets and, and games outside have never been higher because it, like in a year from now, it's going to be hopefully back to normal. We're right. like, we're not going to be inside for the rest of our lives. So now yeah. it's almost like now's the prepping for, the opposite way. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. Let's prep to get back outside and get back in gyms and get back on the court. You know, <laughs> that's what I, I, I've been looking at it and, and saying like, look, and I have a lot of consultations, like strategy calls with my members. Uh, and they're like, like I'm trying to make money online right now. And I'm like, all right, well, cool. But look, like, are you trying to make money online to survive the pandemic? Uh, or are you trying to shift your whole business over to this online model? Uh, if you're trying to survive the pandemic, I got it. Like, let's, let's, let's get some revenue flowing in here. But if you're like, good, if you don't, if that's not a desperation move for you, uh, uh, like you, you working on that right now is completely different than the long term goal. If you want to be, if you're opening up a gym, uh, a brick and mortar gym, or you want to be an MBA strength and conditioning coach, why are you wasting your time here? Like, use this up. I was telling, I was one of my members wants to be an NHL strength coach. I was like, guess what? Every NHL strength coach right now is laying on their couch watching. Joe Exotic and the Tiger King, uh, yeah. with plenty of time to hop on a call. And as like, if you if you capitalize on this opportunity, uh, you, you will be better off in the long run than if you just kind of you're just kind of at the mercy of whatever the flavor of the week is, and you're just going with that. You'll never you'll never get there. Wow, great point, bro. Um, no, yo, we appreciate all the insight that you brought today, man. Um, I'm not, say, time. I'm not gonna say it was the best episode you know what i mean but <laughs> i will <laughs> it's no, up there de definitely high quality episode high quality gems man um and again our first ever guest on a zoom or youtube uh you know podcast episode so everyone got to see your pretty face man so <laughs> we appreciate all that you brought to the table today everyone who's listening well actually you tell them bro where, where can people find you right yeah. Um, website, Instagram, all that good stuff. 
Yep. So uh, my website is 4ahps.com. That's the number 4ahps.com. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram at slight20, S-L-I-G-H-T-2-0. Uh, man, yeah, I mean, those are the best spots for me. All right, cool. Slight20 on IG as well as, uh, I want to say this right, 4ahps. Nailed it, man. You got it. 4ahps.com. 4 as in the number 4ahps.com. Slight20 on IG. Are you on Twitter or anything? or just? I am, but yeah, I'm a bad follow on Twitter. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, this guy is the most honest guest ever. <laughs> Slight20 on IG. Don't forget, you can follow us on IG as well, at Hoop Chatter Podcast. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff for this podcast. We're going to keep trying to bring quality guests like my boy Sean Light on uh, on here so you guys can leave here with as much value as possible. Thank you all for listening, and we will chat later. Peace.